Hello and welcome to doing another unhaul despite the fact that my last unhaul is still sitting in my car and I haven't gotten rid of it yet. But my unhaul, my unhaul shelf is full and I have books piling up on the floor. So it's time um, to get rid of some stuff that I don't care about. So let's just get into it. These are mostly, mostly all books that I've read the last several months. I don't know how many there are. I didn't count. I don't really care. So let's just get into it. And it gets dimmer every second on this very cloudy day. Um, the first book that I have is The Memoirs of Mary Queen of Scots by Carly Erickson, which I have a full review for actually. So I will link that down below. Um, this was fine. Actually, no, this was bad. Why am I saying this was fine? I'm like, my memory is fading on these books so that like, I don't even like remember how terrible I thought this was. This was bad. This was like, so disjointed. It, it felt like plot points. Like, that's what I remember from this the most. It felt like she wrote out like, uh, um, an outline for this book. And she just had like a bullet pointed list of like the different scenes. And it felt like she just wrote each of those scenes and then that was the book and like there was no like development the characters sucked she made up a bunch of stuff like this is not historically accurate at all which would have been fine except that the stuff that she made up was so much less interesting than her actual life and it's like it would have been a much more interesting book had it been historically accurate just because like the stuff she invented wasn't good you're going to make up like wildly inaccurate things make up interesting things don't make up like stupid generic things which is kind of what happened here um i went into a lot more detail in in the review but that's basically the gist of it this was i don't know this book also gets pretty bad reviews i think some of her other books are more well reviewed but yeah this was this was a rough ride <laughs> And then I have the whole um, Tomorrow When the War Began series, which, uh, oh, I'm missing one. There we go. All seven books. Um, these are not in any kind of order, but I have all seven books in the Tomorrow When the War Began series. Let's hold up the first one. Um, I did not love these. These are a young adult dystopic series about um, these teenagers in Australia who go off on a camping trip and when they come back their country has been taken over and for seven books we follow them as they blow things up <laughs> and that's about all that happens here. I watched the movie for these like 10 years ago and the movie was really bad but I noticed that it was based off of a book series so I was like I'm interested in that because this is an interesting concept. So I got the first book from the library and it was also really bad. This first book is rough and also the fourth one is rough, but the rest of them were like three star fine reads. Um, so I read it and I was like, whatever, but I'll continue on. The library didn't have them. So I very slowly over the course of the last 10 years bought all seven of these books so I could read them and then unhaul them. And I finally read them, so I'm unhauling them. I bought them knowing that I would do this. I'm glad I read them. The seventh one was really fun and pretty well done, but I don't need them. So I will be putting this entire complete seven book series into a little free library somewhere. And someone will possibly be very happy to read these or they will just get sucked in like I did and overcommit and waste probably too much of their life on these books but they're not terrible they're just not very good then i have another complete series lord of the rings i finally read these this year and i now don't have to have them on my shelf um i was not overly impressed i found them very dull i didn't think the character development was great for most of the characters i don't like frodo and i don't like gandalf i think <laughs> I don't think they're very interesting lead characters and unfortunately a lot of these books focus on Frodo and Gandalf. Um, I think some of the side characters were a lot more interesting. I wish there had been more time spent on Legolas and Gimli. I think the second- the first half of the second book was really really well done. Like I would have given that alone four stars but for the most part this was kind of mediocre and like 
if I was gonna keep them, my boyfriend wants, uh, um, my boyfriend wants the series, but he wants, like, nicer books. These are just the mass market movie titles, so I don't need them on my shelf. The door just creepily opens, the cat walks in. Um, I just don't need these in this edition on my shelf, but he might get them at a later point, perhaps. I don't know, but they're ugly editions anyway, and I've read them, so that's all that needs to be said. The Good Girl by Mary Kubica. This is a thriller, an adult thriller, that's basically a bad ripoff of Gone Girl, which I really like Gone Girl, but this was just like Gone Girl, but take out the interesting bits and the character development and all that and just make it like generic and boring and flat. So I was not a fan of this. I've heard some of her other books are better and they may well be, but this was just it wasn't just that it was a Gone Girl ripoff, although that was like the most egregious. It was just like everything about this book was kind of designed to just be not for me. Like it was first person in present tense, which I don't like. There were a lot of short chapters, which I don't like. It switched from POVs constantly, which I don't like. It switched between multiple timelines, which I don't like. This was just not the book for me. So I think she wrote this specifically for me to dislike it, which is fine. I don't think it was terrible apart from like the Gone Girl ripoff vibes, but like this was just, I don't know, it was a two star not worth it read. Water Tales of Elemental Spirits by Robin McKinley and Peter Dickinson. This is a short story collection, a fantasy short story collection about kind of magical water things. There are seven short stories. The first is a weird prologue that they wrote together, which is absolutely not worth anything. It's not bad, it's just nothing like it is the most nothing thing i've ever read and then the final six were actual stories i liked robin mckinley's fine they were pretty decent uh, peter dickinson's didn't really do anything for me they weren't bad this was like a three-star book overall it just like i honestly can't sit here and describe any of the stories to you and i think i read this in july like it just I don't know, it, it didn't really do anything for me, but it also wasn't bad. Like, if you're into, like, magical watery type things, they had, like, some mermaid stuff, they had, like, some kraken stuff, they had, like, a variety of things. It was fine, it just, like, it wasn't really bad or good, it was just kind of, like, meh for me. Unaccustomed Earth by Jhumpa Lahiri. I am getting rid of this solely because I realized I had a duplicate of this, which... I, I thought I I thought I'd organized my books in a way that like this wasn't gonna happen anymore and I think this might be the last one because now I have a list of my books so that's fine but I was do I was filming my like all the books on my physical TBR videos and, and I came across this and I was like wait I just I just I just read that I just showed that book and it turns out I have a hardback of it that is in better shape than this because this is kind of like slightly water damaged and stained so um this will be departing and i'll be down to one copy of this book and hopefully this is not a problem that i will ever have again i haven't actually read on a custom earth but i will at some point a uh, 50 year silence by miranda richmond moyo this is a non-fiction memoir ish thing about her grandparents and their relationship and their bitter divorce and the fact that they haven't spoken in 50 years and this would have been an interesting book if she'd written about literally any other aspect of their lives. Like, her grandparents were Jewish in France in the 40s, which, bad time to be Jewish in France. And they were refugees, and they, like, escaped, and, like, her mother, her grandmother was a psychologist. She, I think, she was an MD. Like, she was a doctor as a Jewish woman in the 40s, escaping the Nazis. And being a doctor in like refugee camps and her grandfather was a translator at the Nuremberg trials and instead of writing about either of those things she wrote about their relationship of which she had basically no knowledge so a lot of this book was just like her trying to figure out like little bits of information trying to piece things together she spent like 30 pages just trying to like place them in the same town in the 30s and 40s and I was like if this is like what you're trying to do like you're spending 30 pages just trying to figure out when they would have been in the same location like this was maybe not the subject for this book so I don't know it was so boring and it's like I get what she was trying to do 
and I think at some point while writing this she realized that, that wasn't the interesting story it was just like I don't know it, it just didn't really work for me and the number one ladies detective agency by Alexander McCall Smith this was fine I don't have negative things to say about this book apart from that it was just very much not for me like this book was not written for me <laughs> this was written for someone who enjoys humor and like funny things and like it's about a woman who starts her detective agency in um Africa and kind of like each it's a it's a novel but it feels more like short stories kind of I think um each chapter is like a different case that she has and they're like mostly light-hearted cases kind of funny like you know kind of quirky and it reminded me a lot of like an adult version of Encyclopedia Brown and I think like if that's your vibe this is a good one to read it just like wasn't really my vibe so I'm passing it along. Fallout by Sarah Paretsky. This was a thriller. Um, this was my first Sarah Paretsky book. I don't remember this at all. I know I wrote a review for this. I know I had specific things that I didn't like about this book but like the only thing that I can remember is that I felt like the government conspiracy got too big for what the main character was doing. Like not that I don't believe the government could conspire to kill people and then cover it up. It's just that I don't believe that this random private detective who's trying to find a teenage boy is going to like uncover it and like take on the government. Like I just couldn't buy into that. And there were other things I didn't like but I just really don't remember. Like this book was one that faded really fast and I I remember reading this and thinking Sarah Paretsky is probably not an author I would enjoy. Like not just this book but like her writing style and like kind of everything else was just like not for me. The Elusive Family Secret by Ken Astley. This is a mystery thriller type book about multiple generations of this family who have the secret that they're hiding but none of them actually know what the secret is. <laughs> it's just been like kind of passed down through generations. They have the secret that like they have to keep hidden for the family name or they're all gonna go to prison and they're all like oh no like we have to like uncover it but also do I really want to know? And it's an interesting um premise and I like the idea because you basically check in on this family every 20 years or every 22 years and like you kind of get like a few chapters of them every 22 years as like things develop with each generation which I really liked I just felt like the writing wasn't there like it definitely needed more like line editing I felt like the sentences were all like particularly clunky and it just like I, I don't think it worked very well I think like it needed like a couple more just like general rewrites um to be a good novel but it was an interesting premise. Balzac and the Little Chinese Seamstress by Dai Cixi. This is about the Chinese Cultural Revolution of the 70s I think 70s um and basically this boy and his friend are sent to this village to like do hard labor and when they're in the village they meet this young beautiful girl and they also find a suitcase full of western literature including Balzac. Um, not only Balzac but like I think he's the primary one and they kind of read English literature and fall in love with this Chinese girl and like I don't know that's pretty much all that's going on. There's not a whole lot of political commentary which you kind of think there would be based on you know the setting and the fact that they're reading Balzac a lot. Um, but I didn't feel like there was and the writing wasn't great and like I just this was an odd book so I just didn't really understand what it was doing like I didn't think it was terrible but it was just like I didn't understand what it was doing in terms of like stories or themes or narrative or like I don't know it was just very odd and I didn't really enjoy it. The Violin Conspiracy by Brendan Slocum another one that had a very interesting premise that like could have been great and yet the writing let it down it was so flat like everything about this was flat like the dude is a musician and I have to assume he's a much better musician than he is writer because it was just like every aspect of the writing was just so bad to me like interesting story interesting ideas terrible execution it's all about like racism in the classical music industry and this young black boy who has his very expensive like 10 million dollar violin stolen and it's kind of like who stole it like he's got to investigate and like get his violin back because it's 
a family heirloom and like it kind of has ties back to slavery and like he's dealing with just like the racism in the industry and unsupportive family and like it should have been a really good book and yet all of the characters were flat all of the writing was flat it was very like confusing which was odd because it was such a simple story and it was just not well executed <laughs> in any respect which was so unfortunate like I really wanted to like this and I was just so so disappointed by the fact that I kind of found it just like bad to be honest like it was just really really kind of bad The Effects of Light by Miranda Beverly Whitmore another one that I just found kind of bad um this is about two young sisters who are photographed nude throughout their childhood and they have a family friend who's a photographer and artist and these pictures kind of become big and then there's like this whole like cultural discussion and outrage against like what is pornography what is art like what is appropriate and like etc etc and it just didn't really discuss anything except for in very literal terms uh, just the main character like this book kind of opens with the main character going to an academic lecture where they're literally discussing what I just said like you know what is pornography what is art what is the innocence of childhood what ruins that as it specifically relates to her and her sister like a literal academic discussion about like this book and it was trying so hard to be smart and just like completely failing it was just so shallow and not well written and it had like dual timelines but like the past timeline was so boring and did nothing for me and every time I was in the past I was just waiting to catch up to the future and like read something that like wasn't good but at least like had some sort of interest like I was following some sort of narrative and uh, it was just this was bad this I, I hated this so much this was like such an unpleasant read um I it's fading quickly that's the best thing I can say about this book is that I can barely remember anything about it and the last book for this unhaul is The Walls by Holly Overton which I'm very disappointed by this was fine like this was a perfectly fine read it's a good thriller um, I had a good time. It just wasn't great. I really wanted this to be great. I loved Baby Doll by her and I kind of wanted to love this as well and it was just like fine. Um, I think she tried to have a lot of really interesting discussions and just couldn't quite follow through on them. Like it was like she got two-thirds of the way there but this book just didn't have the depth to really like discuss a lot of the issues because the main character is in public relations for a death row prison and she kind of she goes to the execution she talks to the prisoner she sets up interviews with them and like news outlets and media and like she's also dealing with being in a abusive relationship with her husband and that sounds so interesting it was just like all very obvious and kind of like the abusive relationship was one that thrillers like a lot where it's just like this obvious sadist and a wife who hates him and like that was like the extent of the relationship like there was no like love there was no complicated feelings it was just like pure hate and the second half of this got a lot more interesting but it was just like a three star like a good thriller decent thriller glad I read it not amazing don't need to keep it on my shelf which I, I really wanted to love this and have it be a great read so that is everything that I'm getting rid of for the past few months uh, and I will at some point actually take these to a little free library along with my last haul that is still sitting in a box in the backseat of my car as it has been for like the last six months. So let me know down below if you've read any of these, what you thought of them, if you have, and as always thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all again soon.